back in uh, 1995 when we built the first serious greenhouses to do this commercially, <coughs> Barbara and I joked that we were going to become the backwards farm. And we were going to sell produce only from October to May and then take the summer off like normal people. <laughs> um, it, things never work out as well as you should. We, had, we used to get the month of June off, but then by July you were getting things ready for, to get going again. And it seemed, what the heck, we might as well go year-round. The beauty of it is that since you have these greenhouses, it will encourage you to use them in the summer. And at our farm stand, the best, the crop that we make the most money off of is tomatoes, three times more than the second place crop. Uh, so it's certainly worth having hoop houses to do that in. The second place crop, much to my dismay, Barbara loves this, are flowers. And if it took forever for her to get me to actually even consider growing anything as a feat as flowers. I was a food grower. I wasn't going to play around with any of these frilly, frolly things. But you do notice immediately that when the customers come in, they'll grab that $8 bunch of flowers without even thinking about it. And they're looking uh, very closely as to whether they think your price on spinach is too high or something. So uh, I'm trying to make a living, flowers are a great way to balance winter and summer. And the other thing we mess with are movable greenhouses. And this, I think, is just the greatest idea uh, out there. And you'll see slides of these and how we do it. In fact, recently we were working with a greenhouse company in New Hampshire by the name of Rimmel, Rimmel Greenhouses, uh, to come up with a, a one that's very easily movable because it's on wheels, on rails. And uh, this, I think, is the, the greenhouse that will probably make uh, movable greenhouses more popular. Um, people also, when we uh, started this, said uh, that uh, we couldn't do it because it was too cold, and we told them that we, uh, if we could, that the, the cold was going to kill tomatoes, but it wasn't going to kill spinach. But then they said, well, there's, there's not enough light. And I said, well, yeah, there is enough light. We took a trip across Europe on the 44th parallel, which is where our farm is. And they said, well, gee, how is the skiing in Oslo? And we said, well, interestingly enough, Europe is so much further north on the globe than America is that the 44th parallel that runs through Harborside, Maine, and it also uh, runs through, uh, um, what's that college town in Oregon? I keep forgetting the Eugene. 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 Runs through Eugene, Oregon. So you have some idea of where we are compared to you guys. Um, runs along the Mediterranean coast of France. And uh, that the, the town of Portland, Maine, which is just south of us, is on the exact same parallel of latitude as Saint-Tropez on the Mediterranean. We now jokingly refer to where we live as the sun-baked Atlantic coast of Maine. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do take a trip, as we did, and follow the, your parallel of latitude across Europe, you will find that there is absolutely no problem with growing in the winter. In fact, uh, you follow the 44th all the way to the, across Italy to the Adriatic and uh, had a delightful time talking to farmers. And you would ask them, gee, are there any problems in the winter? There isn't enough light, is there? And they say, oh my god, there's plenty of light. The problem is the cold. And at that, we would burst into laughter. <laughs> we say, you, you guys ain't seen from cold. Because along there, your average winter temperature, which I suspect is probably much the same here, is about 45 degrees in January. And our average January temperature is 21 degrees, so uh, we, you know, we said, okay, there's no problem with that. But then everybody said, okay, but gee, when there isn't enough uh, light, uh, you're going to have vegetables that aren't as nutritious, uh, high nitrates and all that. And, and I said, well, that doesn't seem to make sense, so I researched it. I have good friends in Europe who uh, have been some of the leading researchers on that, and I said, Okay, this is what we're doing. We're growing in unheated houses, and we're fertilizing with compost and maybe a little alfalfa meal, but that's it. And they said, oh, you shouldn't have any problems. 
And I said, well, I heard that there are some organic uh, greenhouses in, uh, in Germany or Holland where they had problems. And they said, yeah, but that's because those guys were using dried blood. They were pushing it with nitrogen the same way that chemical people do. And uh, they also said, and also remember where the main greenhouse industry is in Holland, they're up on the 54th parallel of latitude, which is 10 parallels of latitude north of where you are. So actually, all the way along the US, we get plenty of light. But the thing that really convinced us, uh, we were driving through the Alpil, these little hills uh, uh, south of Avignon. And uh, it, the hills were covered with rosemary and uh, other herbs. I mean, it was just too much. I said, my god, well, why doesn't Harborside, Maine look like this? This is really beautiful. <laughs> And we spied this little beret bouncing up and down among the uh, bushes. So we stopped and wandered over. And it was a delightful little Frenchman out harvesting wild food. And this was in January. And uh, Barbara and I speak enough French, so we struck up conversation with him. And he showed us which ones he was harvesting. And uh, we said to him, uh, well, is this as good in the middle of winter as summer food? And he said, May we? He says, this is what nature is serving now. <laughs> Great phrase. And if you realize that, that because of the Gulf Stream, warm temperatures go up the coast of Europe, and uh, there are parts of the coast of Norway that are probably warmer <coughs> than you are here in the winter, and all the rabbits and the deer are eating the food that's growing there all winter. So if this stuff grown naturally is bad for you, Mother Nature never figured that out.